Hey guys, my name is Yasmina and welcome back to my channel. Today's video is going to be another book recommendations video, but these are all fantastic books that I've read that have mental health representation. So earlier this week I saw on Twitter that this whole week from 18th to 24th of May is a mental health awareness week in the UK. I'm pretty sure in America you guys have this sometime in the fall, but um, I've been wanting to make this video for a while, and so I thought this would be a perfect opportunity to talk about this topic and recommend you guys some more books. Now, this is a very important topic for me, and I think it's underrepresented in books still, and I think it should be more prevalent, especially in YA and middle grade. As I was growing up, I was dealing with mental health issues, but at the time I did not know what they were. I did not know that it was a thing, that anxiety and depression was a thing. No one around me talked about that, and so I didn't really know what was happening with me. And, you know, if I had had these books back then, if I had read these books back then, I think I would have been much better off and I would have at least understood what was happening instead of just chalking it up as, oh, I'm just sad or, you know, it's just a bad day um, when those days kept going. So, so yes, this is very important to me and the book that I'm currently working on, Hunting Vienna, the one I keep telling you guys about, um, also has mental health representation in it along with other kinds of representation. Just a quick disclaimer, none of these books have mental health as the main plot. Like, none of these books are about mental health because I don't necessarily think that's a great plot. Mental health is just something that some people have to deal with and it's a part of our lives and these books just include characters that have mental health and uh, show how they deal with it. So without further ado, here are my recommendations for books with mental health rep. Uh, one of the best books I've read last year, I have recently purchased its sequel and I'm very excited to continue on. It is Truly Devious by Maureen Johnson and I have the second book here, Vanishing Stare. Really, really excited to continue on. This is a trilogy and the first book is kind of a YA uh, mystery thriller and this was incredible. Um, I've actually tabbed it because of the anxiety rep. The main character, Stevie, has really bad anxiety and I thought the way it was handled in this book was really, really well done and very realistic. But the plot of this book follows the main character, Stevie, who moves to a new boarding school. She starts a new school and this school has a very, very dark past where some crimes had been committed uh, years prior but culprit was never caught. They still don't really know what happened and Stevie is a sort of thriller aficionado. She loves solving crimes and mysteries and so she's very excited to start at this school be because she's also really interested in trying to solve the past murders that have happened at the school. I would highly recommend this series regardless. So like I said, I'm very excited to read the second book and the third book as well this year. I'm hoping to finish this series this year. Next up we have a fantasy duology that I keep talking about because it's just fantastic in so many different ways. Um, this is Six of Crows by Lee Bardugo, so Six of Crows and Crooked Kingdom is the sequel and finale. And there's a bunch of amazing stuff in this series as a whole, but in regards to mental health, uh, what I remember for sure is one of the main characters, Inej, I think is how you would pronounce it. She has really, really bad PTSD from something that happened uh, when she was very young. And I still remember like the scenes in which this PTSD is described is so um, vivid and it creates such an image that I kind of still feel feel it crawling underneath my skin, you know, even though obviously this is just a character in the book and I have never come anywhere near uh, experiencing the things that she's experienced, but just the way it was written was very raw and uh, real in my opinion, and I think it was very well done in that sense. And in general, this is a fantastic fantasy duology. This is a multiple POV story of six characters that band together to do this said-to-be-impossible heist on the ice court in the city, and yeah, it's fantastic. Next up is an epic fantasy series that uh, I still have to read the third book of uh, that is out right now, and that is, of course, The Stormlight Archive by the lovely Brandon Sanderson, and this is the first book, The Way of Kings, and again, there's a lot of PTSD uh, representation in the characters in this series, but the one that stands clearer in my head is Kaladin. 
and his past. Of course, I'm not gonna go into spoilers, but I think what happened to Khaled and how it's written in here, I thought it was very good. And obviously this series is incredible. Uh, if you like epic fantasy and you still haven't read this, oh my god, I don't even, like, I don't even just read it. I, I There's no way for me to summarize <laughs> what the series and this book is, but I'll just say it mainly follows two main characters, Kaladin and Sholan, and they're both incredible, and this whole series is incredible. Yes. Next up, another one of my absolute favorite authors, that is John Green, and this is the newest book he released. To be fair, it was quite a few years ago. This is Turtles All the Way Down. And the main character in this book has uh, obsessive compulsive disorder or, or CD, and I'm pretty sure she also has anxiety. It's been a while since I read this, but the main thing that I remember about this is her OCD and Oh man, there is uh, a reoccurring theme in this book about her having a open wound uh, on her finger, I'm pretty sure, and she keeps uh, messing with it or she keeps, every time it sort of dries over or crusts over, she keeps peeling away the crust and there's just something about the way that is described and it's like a reoccurring thing because that's one of the ways she sort of maybe deals uh, with her anxiety, I, f I feel like, if I remember correctly. Um, but in general, she's also like a germaphobe and she has all of these very, very intense internalizations of fear and uh, things that are happening around her and Oh man, <laughs> you really, really get deep inside her thoughts uh, and her mind, and it's a, a little bit scary. I absolutely adore John Green. He is uh, one of my favorite YA contemporary authors of all time. He is the reason why I write YA contemporary myself, and it is uh, fantastic. Next is another one of my absolute favorite YA contemporary books. This is This Song Will Save Your Life by Layla Sales. This is a fantastic coming-of-age story about our main character, Elise. She is also suffering from mental health issues. She is a bit depressed. She also has um, thoughts about suicide as well. And she's trying to she's trying to take control of her life and she's trying to reinvent herself. And one of the ways she reinvents herself is she starts DJing. She stumbles upon this underground dance club and she starts getting DJing lessons from the DJ that runs this. And through this dance club and through her newfound passion for DJing, she she finally starts living a life that she feels more content with. Um, she was very anxious before, she didn't really have any friends, she never really felt like she fit in, but she feels that finally now she's found a place where she belongs. I could relate uh, in a lot of ways to Elise in this book, and just the whole thing was very, very beautifully done, in my opinion, and um, again, a music theme is, some is something that is uh, is a strong love for me, and also something I'm writing. Uh, the Sound of Crooked Hearts, one of my YA contemporary books, has very, very strong music themes, um, and also mental mental health themes, so this was a very big inspiration for me. I actually read it after I wrote that book, but as soon as I started reading, I was like, oh my gosh, this is amazing, this is exactly the sort of stuff I love to read in contemporary so very very good. Next up is Fangirl by Rainbow Rowell. Now this was a super super popular book <laughs> very many years ago I think on booktube. It's how I first stumbled upon it. This follows Kath who is starting her fresh year of university and she is a massive fangirl. She actually is really really obsessed with um, Simon Snow, the Simon Snow series which is pretty much like the Harry Potter series in this world and she writes fan fiction. She's a very famous sort of fan fiction writer of the Simon Snow series and um, Kath has again uh, social anxiety and she finds everything about her first year of uni incredibly incredibly scary um, and she goes back into her world of writing fan fiction as a sort of escape from everything that's happening around her. Um, and it was very sweet and very funny um, and just just a, a light YA contemporary, but that also has some uh, deeper undertones and again, mental health rep as well. A very pink book that I feature quite heavily on this channel and for a very good reason, Queens of Geek by Jen Wilde is an amazing, amazing, very quick and light read, but handle some really really important topics. This is about three friends, two love series, one convention. These three friends from Australia are flying over to the US to attend a fan 
convention, sort of like Comic-Con, and they're massive geeks and like lovers of pop culture, and one of the main characters, it's multiple point of view, but one of the main characters has severe, severe anxiety, and everything she's going through to go to this convention is completely out of her comfort zone, and almost as soon as she gets there and she is, you know, enveloped by masses and masses of people, she gets a panic attack, and you know, it's sort of, it just shows how she has to deal with this, even though this is something that she really, really wants to do and she's been wanting to do for such a long time. It means so much to her to go to this convention and to be around people who get her. But, you know, her anxiety is just one of those things that uh, prevents her from doing the things that she likes and she pushes against that, but, um, you know, mental health and anxiety are not really things you can uh, conquer. Um, but it's just something you deal with and uh, you sort of have to learn to live with and um, this book sort of shows how the main character or one of the main characters deals with that while still being able to do the things that she loves and wants to do so um, and it's also a very queer and lovely book and just you know full full of nerdy goodness so I really recommend this. Next up a very sad book this is uh, All the Bright Places by Jennifer Niven and this sort of handles themes of again depression and suicide thoughts um, and things like that. I read this a very, very long time ago. It handles two characters, a girl and a boy, who are sort of learning from each other and slowly falling in love. But uh, it's not a very... it's not a happy ending and it's not a happy story. So Another main character who has anxiety is Molly from The Upside of Unrequited by Becky Albertalli. Um, I really love Becky Albertalli. Albert Halley's book, Simon vs. the Homo Sapiens Agenda, is fantastic, and this was her follow-up to that. Another YA contemporary coming-of-age story about Molly, who, like I said, has anxiety, and she again, she's trying to fit in, and she's trying to make new friends um, and find love, because all of her crushes that she's ever experienced so far have all been unrequited, and she's kind of trying to get over that, and trying to understand that she needs to love herself first before she shares that love to anyone else. A very classic YA contemporary and one of my favorites of all time is of course The Perks of Being a Wallflower by Stephen Chbosky. Charlie, the main character, is a bit of a wallflower. He's shy, um, he probably has a bit of social anxiety and a bit of depression. I, I can't remember if it's ever specifically mentioned in this book because this book is sort of a diary format um, and it's been years and years since I have read it, but looking back, I'm pretty sure Charlie must have at least social anxiety because it says on the back that he's socially awkward, but I think, you know, this book came out a long time ago before mental health was sort of something that people really talked about openly. So I think, you know, them calling it social, being socially awkward is, I don't think you would do that now. I think you would just call it that he has social anxiety. Just fantastic book in general. And of course, I'm sure you guys have heard of the movie that was made after this. That's fantastic as well. Next up is Everything Everything by Nicola Yoon. And now this follows Maddie who lives in a bubble. She is allergic to literally everything, everything, everything. And her mother is sort of keeping her safe from the world by not letting her leave the confines of her own room. This book is interesting and I don't want to spoil anything for you. It's a very very short book. I think I read it in one sitting as well. And if you've ever seen the movie Bubble Boy, this is similar. <laughs> all right, and last book I'm going to recommend to you guys is one of my new favorite books of all time and that is I Was Born For This by Alice Osman. I will post a book review of this soon. But this, in terms of mental health rep, is fantastic as well. The two main characters in this, it's dual point of view, and both of the two main characters have anxiety. And this story follows Angel and Jimmy. Angel is a massive fangirl of this group called The Ark, and Jimmy is one of the members of The Ark. And at the beginning of the book, we follow Angel as she meets her best online friend for the first time, and they are both massive fans of The Ark, and they are preparing for The Ark uh, obsessed weekend where they go to see their one of their concerts and they go to a meet and greet with them and things like that and it's just I will talk more about this book in my upcoming review because I have a lot of feelings about this book. So those were all the books that I'm gonna recommend to you guys today in terms of mental health representation. Of course these are all books that I've read that have mental health representation either specified 
clearly or implied. And yeah, I have a lot of other books on my TBR that are said to have mental health rep and I'm very excited to get to them at some point. But if you guys have any more awesome recommendations that are, include characters uh, that suffer from mental health issues, please leave them in the comment section below. I'm always looking to find more and to find more great representation for this topic. And I, of course, I really hope you guys enjoyed this video and I hope you pick some of these books up um, if they sound interesting to you. But yeah, that was it for me today, guys. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope you have a great day and do, do take care of yourself. Um, and I'll see you next week with a new video. Bye.